Well, it would appear the moment that we've been awaiting for almost three years now, really, I think, since WrestleMania 31, when she made that appearance in that segment with The Rock and Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, and then all the buzz building to potentially a match with her and Stephanie at WrestleMania 32. We've been waiting for this, and especially knowing how the UFC thing went south on her really, really quickly, um, after that period of time where she was the biggest name and the hottest act in UFC, y you knew it was just going to be a matter of time before Ronda Rousey signed with WWE. And reports are, is that even though I don't think it's been officially announced yet, is that she has officially signed on with the WWE which isn't a surprise if you heard the news recently about her having dinner with Triple H. Why would he be having dinner with her? Well, one, he's God. Two, he's probably telling her about the glories of having his daughters. Or he's trying to sign her to a contract or potentially all three of them. So you look at this. And I know I've talked about this in the past. But here's what I feel like is important for me to say. Is that... I shouldn't minimize this signing. This is a big deal. This is a very big deal. Whenever WWE decides to officially drop the news that it has actually happened, whether they do it um, in the next day or two, whether they do it on the 25th anniversary of Raw, whether they do it at the Royal Rumble, whether they do it after the Royal Rumble, I don't know. But you know it's going to be a big deal. It is going to be an attention getter. They are going to get a lot of mass media, mainstream media coverage out of this. And for the WWE, they live for that. They want that. They feel the need for it in their loins. And they're going to get it. And they're going to get a lot of it. And there's going to be a lot of talk about the company and her going to WWE. So for the WWE, that is a win. And when you look at the WWE and you look specifically at the WWE product, the women's product most notably, she will definitely be somebody, something different. There will be challenges that go along with that, with her being so different, but she instantly comes in and is different. I don't care what anybody's going to say in the comments section. I will at least give that. If she's actually a legit, like, big-time fighter, legit badass to a degree until she actually meets somebody that can actually fight in a real fight and then she kind of gets punked out. So this is a big deal for the company and they made it happen. And you know with Shayna Baszler signing previously I wouldn't be surprised in the future if you see like Paige Van Sant, maybe others too, who knows, maybe Holly Holm, maybe someday a cyborg, you never know. This might be a path that the WWE goes down in the future and some of these women from the mixed martial arts world, from the fighting world, may come to WWE as a way to get away from the real fight game, but also maybe to open up other avenues, uh, associate themselves with a more family-friendly product. Maybe they feel like it's an opening to TV, to movies, what have you. I don't know. But it's a big deal. It is a big deal. And don't let me tell you that it's not, in theory, a big deal for the WWE and that there won't be a lot of fans that are geeked up about this, that are pumped up about this, and excited about this. Just don't count me as one of them. Look, I don't care what anybody says. Part of being a fan is you have things you like and you have things you don't like. You don't have to hate everything, but you also don't have to like everything. And personally, while I get the buzz and I get some of the excitement, I think it's a whole bunch of ado for somebody that is, in my opinion, boring as bricks. I see no personality, no charisma, my skills, forget about it. The ability to act? <laughs> if she could act, she would have retired from any and all fight or fight related games and she would be doing movies full time based off of how big her star was just a couple of years ago. I look at her and 
I see like I want to be women's Brock Lesnar, but the difference with Brock Lesnar was is he at least had spent a few years in professional wrestling. This was a guy that the company had made some money with, and this is a guy that they were familiar with, a guy that you knew how you could package, a guy that you knew what you could do with him, even if he didn't always do it right, you knew in theory what you could do. With a type like a Ronda Rousey, I don't know if the WWE fully knows or understands how to book a woman like this, if they're going to be able to book a woman like this. And frankly, when we look at this company today, and when we look at so many things that they do, realistically, why would you have any confidence that they would all of a sudden get Ronda Rousey right? They might. They very well might. I'm just saying, you shouldn't get your hopes too high too early. This is ultimately one of these things where the old excuse when you know an angle's going to be stupid from the very beginning, but people in wrestling be like, oh, you got to wait to see how it plays out. This is one of these instances where you got to wait to see how it plays out because, frankly, we don't really know what WWE is going to do with Rousey. We don't know how she's going to make the transition from UFC to WWE. But I'm just not that excited because if they book her as this big powerhouse, sure, she will be somewhat different. But if there is no viable, realistic, believable competition for her, then you have created a similar problem to what you have for a period of time with Brock Lesnar to where you have nobody for her to face. Therefore, you're spending all this money on her and you're not going to get the maximum return on that massive investment. And sure, while Ronda Rousey is not going to get nearly the amount of money that a Lesnar, a Cena, a Reigns, or somebody else does, she is going to get a sizable amount of money, and most certainly from day one, is going to be the highest paid woman in WWE, not named Stephanie McMahon or one of the other corporate executives, and by a good margin. And frankly, that's the way it should be. Because Ronda Rousey has made money, she doesn't have to do it, WWE feels like they have to have her, that's when you put their balls over the coals of the fire and you take them behind the woodshed. You exercise your leverage. And I'm relatively confident that Ronda Rousey would have people around her that would be able to exercise leverage. I'd be stunned if she's not getting going to get close to a seven-figure per year deal. And if she didn't, then her agent needs to be fired. Because this is Rousey. This isn't just some regular ham and egger. You know, no offense to them signing a Candice LeRae, but in the grand scheme of things, who the hell is a Candice LeRae in terms of notoriety, star power, appeal, all that, to a Ronda Rousey? If Ronda Rousey is not making seven figures from day one, then there's a problem here. There's an issue here. So there's a positive that it potentially bumps up the pay for the other women because that division matters more. But then you worry about with the Ronda Rousey. With the brand split, you only put her on one show, you would assume ultimately it'd probably be Raw. What the hell does that say about SmackDown or vice versa? I just, I just, there's something about this that just rubs me the wrong way. There's just something about this that feels like this could be a freaking colossal flop. And deep down, I hope I'm wrong. I'm no Rousey fan, but I, I really do hope this works out. I know she's been a wrestling fan for a long time. She loves professional wrestling. But just like for a lot of us, the J Joe Blows, like me, you, and all the other people out here, um, loving professional wrestling from the outside is much different than loving professional wrestling when you're actually inside of it. And even a lot of these dudes that, and gals that pretend like they love wrestling, once they get into it, bullshit. Once you put your livelihood at stake, once it is your livelihood, it's an entirely different animal. It is. So I wonder how she's going to react. I wonder if she's going to get in there and realize maybe it's not what she thought it was or not all that she thought it was going to be. And she's going to be looking for a way out. I wonder how long they're actually going to keep her in the fold. Because if you've only got her there for a year, then why even bother because you're going to give her a ton of money, put a bunch of smoke up her in terms of marketing, media, promotion, where she could potentially bolt in a year. To me, if you haven't locked her into a three to five year deal, there was really no point in doing this. And we know none of the particulars. We may not know any of the particulars for a while. But when we do, they'll be interesting to see. It's just, when I look at Rousey... I feel like she was really a UFC creation, a Dana White creation. That they put her up against a bunch of ham and egger female fighters. 
because they knew with John Bones Jones and some of these other guys that they lacked big name stars. These guys are getting hurt. They're flunking drug tests. They're retiring, whatever. They needed a big star. So they threw everything they could behind Ronda Rousey. And then once you got a better caliber a female fighter to go against her, she got her ass rocked a couple of times in a row and then Bob's your uncle, she's done. So I just wonder how much star power she really truly has, how much appeal there's really going to be long term, and how much of a real needle mover she's going to be for WWE. And then I wonder if she's actually going to be any good at it. There is no guarantee with anybody, frankly, Rousey included, that she's going to be any good. And I, I just look at her, and she seems like this boring-ass charisma vacuum that can't act her way out of a paper bag. And as much as wrestling, for whatever reason, has become about the moves and the impact spots and the high spots, being a character matters still. Being able to tell a story still is supposed to matter. Being able to talk, being able to act, these are supposed to be all part of the game in professional wrestling. And it feels like Ronda Rousey is going to require significant work if she's ever even going to be able to get that at all. So y'all can be excited about Ronda Rousey signing with WWE all you want. I'm not. Doesn't move the needle for me. Doesn't get me excited. I just really don't care. And frankly, while I know this will get some backlash, why would anybody care? Big whoopee deal. It's just another person that WWE, it feels like, isn't going to ultimately do right and get the most out of.